Well, the reason it's so important to have your employment contract reviewed uh, before you start a new job is so that you have a complete and comprehensive understanding of what it is you're getting yourself into. Um, you also want to make sure that you're fully aware of um, restraint of trade clauses, um, uh, provisions around termination, uh, and uh, there's also a bit of an, uh, an unfair balance of power, so to speak, when it comes to the employer and the employee. Um, so I think from the employee's perspective, uh, you really want to ensure that the contract is fair and reasonable in all the circumstances. So a restraint of trade clause is when your employer seeks to uh, put you into a binding contract that prevents you from working with a competitor after you cease employment uh, with your current employer. It could also um, seek to restrain you from um, poaching any of the employer's employees or stealing any of their clients. So uh, that would be a non-solicitation clause in a contract. Um, and generally speaking, these provisions, you know, they might, uh, the employer might seek to enforce them for a period of anywhere from three to 12 months. Um, and they, the geographical area that they cover can be quite um, narrow to quite large. So it's important that you have, uh, that you fully understand those clauses before you go ahead and sign, you know, and enter into any agreement uh, restraining your ability to work following your current employment. So when it comes to restraint of trade clauses, the first thing that I would recommend uh, to a client is obviously having them reviewed before you sign any agreement that has a restraint of trade clause in it. Um, the best time to try and negotiate around a restraint of trade clause is obviously before the contract is signed. So if you come to us with concerns about a restraint of trade clause in uh, an employment contract that you're intending to sign, at that time you've got a bit of um, leeway to try and negotiate with the employer um, around the restraint of trade clause. Obviously, it's then up to the employer whether they want to change the restraint of trade or take the restraint of trade out. But once you have signed a restraint of trade clause, then generally you're subject to its terms. Of course, um, if the employer does seek to enforce a restraint of trade, then it's going to come down to whether the restraint of trade provisions are fair and reasonable in the circumstances and whether they um, act to protect the legitimate business interests of the employer. If you find yourself in a situation where there's been a breach of the employment contract, um, the first thing that I would recommend that you do is seek the advice of a lawyer. Uh, the lawyer should be able to tell you uh, how serious the breach is and uh, whether it's worth pursuing um, a cause of action for the breach of contract. Um, Particularly in the employment context, if there's been a breach of contract, there may also be um, a cause of action for uh, unfair dismissal or under the general protections legislation with the Fair Work Commission.